We're going to take a quick look at setting up uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking version 10. Um, it's really a, a rather simple process, but this will just give you a, a sense of how, how easy it really is. The first thing you're going to want to do is put in the disks, load the software, it's going to ask you for your key. Once it's loaded, you start up the program. And this is actually running uh, on a virtual machine on my Mac right now. Um, but you'll get a sense of how well it runs, uh, even though it's not using the full RAM and, and CPU of the computer, because that's mostly going over to the Mac side of things. So once it's uh, initialized, you're going to have to create a user. So the first thing you want to do is go over to Naturally Speaking, and you're going to want to manage users. And you're going to want to create a new one. And we're going to call this new user test. Um, it's going to ask you your language. You can choose from uh, English US or English UK. It's going to ask you if there's an accent, Australian, British, Indian, Northern Ireland, uh, Southern US, Spanish accented English. Uh, I'm from the Northeast, so we're going to do general. Uh, dictation source. You can plug it into uh, mic in jack. That's actually the, the system mic. Line in. You can actually plug into the uh, jack for an external mic or a headset, a desk array mic plugged into the mic in or line in, an array microphone, which I've used in the past, but this microphone is good enough that I don't need to, a USB microphone, desk array USB microphone, so are you using the, the 3.5 millimeter jack or are you using the USB? A Bluetooth microphone is supported in the Pro version, pocket PC device such as a digital recorder, recording device or a digital recording using sound files. So we're just going to stick with the basic mic in and select it. It's going to create the vocabulary and again depending upon the speed of your computer it will take a brief period of time or a little bit longer. More updates for Windows. No thank you. All right, then it's going to ask you which sound system you want to use. Sometimes it's trial and error, depending upon your computer. Um, this I've had no problem. It's simply the microphone that VMware pulls off of the, uh, the main system. It's going to want you to position your mic. They don't recommend doing uh, voice recognition without a headset, a noise-canceling headset. I'm finding that the microphone on the MacBook Pro is good enough that I don't need one. Even on my Toshiba netbook, I really haven't needed to use a headset. Um, but if you're not getting good results, you may want to try a headset. Most of the bundles of the software come with a headset inside that's good enough to use. Not great, but good enough. You're going to want to check the volume. In this step, the computer listens to the sound of your voice and adjusts the volume setting of your microphone. When the computer has finished adjusting the volume, it beeps to signal that the process is complete. If you reach the end of this text, but you have not heard a beep, Start reading again, the text again, from the beginning. You should only have to read for about 10 to 15 seconds. In that case, it took far longer. It's hit or miss with how long it takes to actually do that. You just keep reading until it beeps. Then you go on to the next step, which is to check the quality of the microphone. In this step, the computer checks the audio input from your sound system. Having high quality audio input is very important for good speech recognition. Poor audio input will make it difficult or impossible for the program to recognize your speech accurately. When the computer has finished checking the audio quality, Welcome to General Training. Welcome to General Training. Training is about to begin. As you could see from the first sentence, as much as the training is training the program, it's actually also training you how to speak. So until you get your voice modulating in the right way and the clarity and the articulation in the right way, it actually won't allow you to go on. So I think that's a, something that people don't necessarily realize. You're training the computer, but you're also training yourself. So let's uh, do the first bit of this and then we'll skip to the end of the process.
We are pleased to acknowledge Scott Adams and Harper Business, comma, a division of HarperCollins Publishers, comma, for their permission to use excerpts in this training program from Scott Adams's book, comma, Dogbert's Top Secret Management Handbook, comma, as told to Scott Adams, comma, author of The Dilbert Principle, period. Dogbert's Top Secret Management Handbook, period. Copyright, 1996, by United Feature Syndicate, Incorporated. It's a few minutes later, and I've finished reading the text, and it tells me that I've finished the actual training, but we're not done with the process. Now it's going to adapt the user files, and then it's going to do a, yet another step, which actually is one of the steps that makes a huge difference in the accuracy, at least in my experience. So we click OK, and it starts adapting the, file, the user files. Again, depending upon the system configuration, this can take a few seconds or it can take a few minutes. On the netbook, it took a fairly long time. Um, as you notice here, it's actually moving rather quickly. Um, not as quickly as you might like or as I might like, but it's really not taking a huge amount of time because uh, it's running on a fairly quick system even though it's sharing uh, the power between both the Windows and the Mac side of the program. I paused the recording for a little while because it did take another four, three, four minutes, I guess. Now what it does is it actually goes and it looks for your email, but Microsoft Outlook, which I don't use here, and documents Microsoft Word. So I don't know how many documents it's going to find, but if you do have documents and email on your computer when you set up, it is definitely worth doing this as it really increases the accuracy in my experience. So it says it can take between three, between five and 30 minutes. I've never found that it takes anywhere close to 30 minutes to do. Um, it'll be even less because there aren't a lot of programs here. And that's it because there wasn't, uh, there weren't a lot of documents or emails for, from which it could pull. And then it actually builds a language model based upon some of the vocabulary that you tend to use, which is why it's important to do this. After that, you click Next. Run accuracy training in a scheduled time. We're going to click no because I'll remember to do that. I don't want to be bothered. Do I want to let them collect data from me? Uh, no, definitely not. Do I want to watch the tutorial? Do I want to see what's new in version 10? Um, both of these are good to do if you're new to the program. Or do I want to start dictating? We're going to start dictating. It gives you a tip every time you start the program until you, unless you nix the show tips at startup. And now all we're left with doing is open Dragon Pad. This has been an example of starting with Dragon Naturally Speaking version 10 period. The process of installing the software and training the program to work with your voice is not a difficult process, nor is it a long process period. It is, comma, however, comma, worth doing it carefully and doing it well, period. This little bit of initial training makes a huge difference in the accuracy and the ability to truly use your voice to type text that is accurate and fast, period. New paragraph. This ends the second installment in our Look Ma, No Hands series on voice recognition technology today, period.